Hello, my name's Leslie Atherton and this is a short story called Ice Cream Sundays. Summer Sundays in the park. They sat on the bench sometimes, but usually the four of them spread themselves out on the grass. Daniel was the youngest at five and then came Edward at eight, Joshua at ten and Sarah at a very grown-up eleven. Three boys and a girl, just waiting and wondering. The biggest part of Ice Cream Sundays was waiting and wondering. Waiting till Dad finished work so he could come and kick a ball about. Waiting till Mum returned from the ice cream van. Wondering what she'd surprise them with. Wondering how she'd managed to carry whatever she'd chosen for them without dribbles and drips and drops. But knowing there definitely would be dribbles and drips and drops. Wondering if there would be a cornet, perhaps a double. Perhaps it would be squirted with raspberry sauce or even if mum had plenty of money in her purse, with a flake or those multicoloured sprinkles that looked amazing but tasted of nothing and could sometimes be uncomfortably hard and crunchy when they sneaked into the spaces between your teeth. And they'd be wondering what flavour of ice cream mum would choose. Vanilla was the obvious choice, but sometimes she'd shock them with Tutti Frutti, their favourite chocolate, or even an off-the-wall strawberry. The children didn't mind. All of those went well with their favourite raspberry sauce. But Mum might instead treat them to a fruity lolly, perhaps a grown-up cider lolly or a silly-shaped rocket ice. There was always so much choice on those summer Sundays. Whatever it was that Mum had chosen for them, all four children knew exactly what Mum would choose for herself. They knew because she chose it every single time. She'd have rum and raisin, three scoops squashed and squished between a marshmallow wafer and a plain one. She had allowed the children to try the ice cream ones, allowing each one a lick from the edge of her wafer, but all spluttered and agreed that it was completely horrible. Bitter and nasty tasting, they said. Mum said it was because of the alcohol in the rum, though there was only a tiny bit and it was just for the flavour. If that's what alcohol tastes like, thought Sarah, I don't ever want to try it, even when I'm grown up. You may be wondering why these four children did not accompany their mum to the ice cream van on summer ice cream Sundays. Well, the answer was simple. After lots of bad experiences at the ice cream van, mum was determined to do it on her own. In fact, mum told them that if they trailed her to the van with their pestering and endless questioning, then she would not, repeat, not buy a single ice cream or lolly. The problem, like the answer, was simple. Four children between five and eleven. Four children, each with plenty to say. Four children, all loud and indecisive and extraordinarily irritating when it came to choosing ice cream. So it was left to mum to make the decision, to purchase the ice cream and to carry the ice creams back to the grass. It was only then that she would allow herself to relax as she collapsed onto the picnic rug to enjoy her own rum and raisin wafer. They were good days, but they weren't idyllic. For a start, the children would get impatient waiting for Mum to return with their treats. It also happened that they could be tetchy and awkward. One time, Mum bought them each a strawberry mivy, and all four moaned that they would have preferred a funny feet or a 99. They liked everything that the ice cream van had to sell them, but that wasn't the point. Mum would regularly buy something the children had just decided they no longer enjoyed. Mum couldn't win. Even so, those ice cream Sundays at the park were the days she liked the best. They were days when Mum and Dad never argued, and when the sun shone more brightly and the rain, when it fell, was softer and warmer than on any other day. Sarah, aged 11, really liked ice cream Sundays because they allowed her a little time to sit and just be herself while her brothers, ever-present pesterers who never allowed her any freedom, played together with Dad. Dad would always try to encourage Sarah to join in or help an uncoordinated Daniel with his ball skills. But Sarah would always shake her head and look at her mum. Mum time, she'd say. And the females of the family would sit and chat about life, boys, school, music. Joshua, aged ten, adored ice cream Sundays because they indulged his three major passions. Ice cream, football and spending time with his dad. Edward, aged eight, absolutely loved ice cream sundaes too, mainly because of the surprise of not knowing what his mum would choose at the van, but equally fun for Edward was the walk home, because they went past and sometimes into the sweet shop and the house of a million cats. 
They would also walk past Edward's school, and Edward absolutely loved school. Lastly, Daniel, aged five, thought ice cream sundaes were the best days ever, because when his brothers and sisters played and talked with him and pushed him about, they did it in a nice way, not like they would at home. Even Mum was the happiest person in the world on ice cream sundays. The joy of choosing her children's ice creams, the time with Sarah on the picnic rug, the ownerless dogs occasionally careening into them, chasing after balls thrown for other dogs, the time spent waiting for her husband to finish work, the anticipation of his arrival, and the happiness she felt as she saw him walking over the horizon to their usual position on the grass, with his own napkin-wrapped ice cream in hand and the fun of wondering if, this week, he'd randomly choose the same option as she'd chosen for the kids. Yes, even Mum loved ice cream sundaes. But as for Dad, did Dad also love ice cream sundaes? Did he look forward to them from Sunday evening onwards? No, he did not. Certainly he played football with the boys and hugged his wife and daughter. Certainly he participated in the guessing games and counted the animals they could see sneaking behind the filthy net curtains in the house of cats. But there was something Dad really didn't enjoy about ice cream sundaes. The thing that Dad didn't like, the thing that really made Dad mad, the thing he couldn't bear and that made him cringe every single week with the dribbles and drips and drops of ice cream or ice lolly. By the time he turned up at the park, the rest of the family had finished their treats, and as a result, there was never anywhere to sit on the picnic blanket, so full was it with dribbles and drips and drops of sugary slime. He tried to kiss and hug his wife, but her hands and wrists and arms were always covered in drips. Her top was always covered in ice cream too. Either that or melted lolly. Her face would be too, and so were the faces, arms, hands and tops of the children. Wherever he looked, he was unable to escape the goo and mess. For most of us, that would just be a bit of a sticky inconvenience. But for Dad, it was something he dreaded from Sunday evening till the following ice cream Sunday morning. And there was nothing he could do about it. Poor Dad. Poor Dad. Poor, poor Dad. Should he just wish for rain and for wintry days when the ice cream truck would be replaced with the hot food truck and when the children's chins and hands would dribble with gooey tomato ketchup from burgers and mustard mayo from hot dogs?